Activity 4. We've got trouble. In this activity, we are going to explore how to troubleshoot a program that isn't working. Let's make a few adjustments to our robot by changing the location of our touch sensor. This will be important in later chapters as well. Move your touch sensor to the side of the robot and make sure it is facing up. Then let's add a medium length cross axle into the button. Push a wedge belt wheel to the bottom of the axle. Finally, add the sprocket rim to the top to make an easier button to push. We're going to make a simple program to allow our robot to move in different ways after the touch sensor button is pushed. Start a new program and name it Trouble. Let's make the robot move straight forward first with a move steering block. Change the motor to on and reduce the motor power to 30. Let's make the motor stop when it senses a touch. From the flow control tab, add in a weight block. Change the type from time to touch sensor, then select compare and state. After this, go to the action tab and drag another move steering block in. Set the motor to off. You can test this while the EV3 is still connected by pressing the play button in the lower right. Be sure you are holding your EV3 off of the surface to be sure it doesn't run off the table. Let the motor go for a bit and then tap the touch sensor. The motor should immediately stop. Let's see what happens when we add in a few more movements that we want to follow this. Copy and paste the weight block. Connect it to the end of the motor stop. Copy and paste the move steering block, but let's make sure this one turns 100% to the right. You can select multiple blocks, so let's select the weight and the stop motor block together. Copy and paste them after the last move steering block. Notice that you can move these blocks and rewire them to make it easier to see everything on one screen. Now copy and paste another weight block at the end. Let's select the first four blocks and copy and paste them to add them to the end. If you follow the program, it looks like it should go straight until we tap the touch sensor, then it should stop. Then when we tap the touch sensor again, it should start going in a circle to the right. Tapping the touch sensor after that should stop the motor. We can have the robot start going straight again when we tap the touch sensor and it will keep going straight until we tap it one last time, which should stop the motor. Save your work. Download the program to your robot and try it out. Pause the video to test what occurs. But here's a hint, it probably won't work the way you think. Try it a couple of times and then come back and we'll figure out how to fix it. Well, how'd it go? If you followed our directions, it probably didn't work the way we described it. So what went wrong? There are lots of places to begin troubleshooting programs that aren't working as expected. First, we need to determine if this is a sensor problem or a program problem. A sensor problem means that the sensor isn't working correctly. Perhaps the sensor is plugged into the wrong port, the connection is loose, or the part may just be broken. To test this, first be sure that your touch sensor is plugged into port 1 and that there are no loose connections. Next, you will want to make sure your sensor is registering a touch properly. In the lower right corner of the screen, you will see a tab for port view. If you click on that tab, you will be able to interactively see the information coming from all of your sensors. In port 1, you should see the touch sensor icon. If you push down in your touch sensor, then you should see the number change from 0 to 1. If you don't see that change, then there is an issue with the sensor. If you do see that change, then there is a problem with your program. You can test your program by having the display screen on the EV3 alert you to where the problem is occurring. Since we just practiced writing information to the screen, let's put that into practice here. Immediately after the first weight block, drag up a display block. Change the display type to text and grid. Also, change the size of the text to 1. The text that you want to appear should be put into the white area at the top of the block that currently says Mindstorms. Let's fill this with the text 1 Press. That way we will know that the program got this far before failing. Copy that display block and paste it after the next weight block. Change the text to read 2 Press. 
and change clear screen to false. We don't want to erase the previous text that we wrote to the screen. We also want to be sure to have this information on a separate line so it's easier to read. We can do that by changing the Y value of this block to 2. Copy and paste the block we have selected and put it after the next weight block. You can rearrange your program visually by zooming out and dragging blocks around to make it easier to see. Change the text to 3 press and change the Y value to 4. Copy this block and paste it after the next weight block. Change the text to 4 press and change the Y value to 6. Finally, let's paste that block one more time and put it after the final weight block. Change the text to 5 press and change the Y value to 8. To keep the data on the screen, we need to add in a loop block at the end of the program. Now it should write a line to the screen every time it reads a tap on the touch sensor. If you run the program using the play button while the robot is connected, you can also actually see the program as it moves from block to block. Save your work. Lift up the robot and push the play button. You should see that the first block is lit up. Now, when we tap the touch sensor, we can see that it rapidly moves through all the blocks and it has written all five lines on our screen. Touch the stop button in the lower right to end the program. How did this happen? The problem is that we aren't measuring the state correctly. We have it set to only check if the button is down. The robot thinks very fast, so in the time that it takes you to push the button down, it has had a chance to test the button many times. We need to set it to look for a bumped state instead of a pressed state. By changing this on all the blocks, the program should now work properly. Save your work. Pause the video and give it a try to see what you find. If the program works properly now, you can move the display blocks and try again. Be sure to save your work.